Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome to the immunology lectures and today we will discuss about the interferons as I told in my last class where we stopped in the last class uh, we have talked about the cytokines for quite a long time now in at least in three lectures. So what these cytokines are then we discussed about the different uh, receptors the cytokine receptors and the classification of the cytokines how they are classified. Uh, mainly uh, depending on their functions and depending on the receptors to they bind to. And then we have discussed about the different um, uh, actions of the cytokines or the different types of cytokines uh, that are um, uh, that act in the innate as well as in the adaptive system. <coughs> A specific class of cytokine is the interferons. Interferons falls under the class of cytokines and they also have the same uh, uh, mode of action they bind to similar cytokine receptors and they have almost a similar mode of action like uh, activation by this jack and stat pathway that we had discussed in our uh, in uh, cytokine receptor class so this also leads to stat dimerization and then up regulation or uh, expression of certain uh, genes uh, downstream so why interferons interferons are broadly classified into three different classes that is the type 1, the type 2 and the type 3. The type 2 interferons falls under a very different class. Why? Because the type 1 and the type 2, the type 1 and the type 2 are the two uh, major class of interferons that are involved in antiviral activities. So, interferons remember are the primary molecules that are responsible to fight viral infection. So, whenever there is a viral infection in our body the interferons are the first uh, molecules to react and uh, there are uh, certain uh, interferon uh, sensitive uh, regulatory or response elements which are present on our gene sequences and that are being transcribed in response to the uh, interferon binding. So, starting from where we had been discussing in the cytokine receptor class, if you remember this in the cytokine receptor class we discussed about the receptors, the cytokine receptors. And the cytokine receptors as we told that usually when there is dimerization of this receptor. So, the receptors normally mm, they remain uh, they do as monomers and when there is binding of a cytokine a specific cytokine there is dimerization or tetramerization or oligomerization of these receptors. And that leads to the that activates this kinases which are the jack kinases the janus kinases and this jack kinases they start phosphorylating the receptors the, they are they are tyrosine kinases associated with these receptors and they start phosphorylating the uh, receptors as spe specific sites and due to this phosphorylation then there is docking of the stat molecules. The stat molecules which are normally present as monomers, they then come and bind or docks onto the receptor. Now, when these stat molecules they dock onto the receptor, they are then cross phosphorylated by the jacks or the uh, Janus kinases and this stat gets phosphorylated. Now, once this stat is phosphorylated, the phosphorylated stat can now dimerize. So, then it forms a dimer and this phosphorylated stat once it dimerizes the dimeric stat can now go into the nucleus and can upregulate 
or induce expression of several genes. Now, the same thing or the same uh, mechanism is also applicable in case of the interferons. If you look into this picture here, the interferons I have classified type 1 and type 2 together. So, they kind of have similar uh, receptor structures and they also have the similar jacks or the jack kinases and the similar stats that are responsible for mediating the downstream signaling, the type 1 and the type 3. And both these type 1 and type 3 interferons, they are involved in antiviral responses. Widely the wide class of interferons or the widely classified interferons are the type 1. So, the type 1 interferons are primarily the interferon alpha, beta, kappa and epsilon of which interferon alpha is the dominating interferon. It, it, it is everywhere and it is the primary interferon and its binding to the receptor can elicit a uh, downstream signaling. The class 2 or the type 2 receptor, the type 2 interferons, they belong to a very different class and in that case, it leads to a receptor tetramerization. So, it binds to the receptor like this, which brings two dimers together. So, there is two dimers coming together and it is a different class of uh, jack that are associated with this type 2 interferons and these receptors are usually known as the interferon INFGR that is the interferon gamma receptors and they are very specific for the uh, type 2 or the interferon gamma. The type 2 interferons are the interferon gamma. So, they are primarily or they are very very specific for the type 2 interferons or the interferon gamma type. Now, there is also the downstream signaling is also pretty much similar that is it is a stat mediated signaling. So, that also leads to dimerization of stat 1 and it forms a homodimer of stat 1. In case of type 1 and type 3 interferons, it is a heterodimer of stat 1 and stat 2. So, it is the same stat, but it is stat 1 and stat 2 which gets phosphorylated and then they come together and they forms a dimer. Now, this dimeric stat, this dimeric stat then associates with an interferon regulatory factor or the IRF. Then IRF this together, this complex along with the stat, that dimer and the IRF, this can then go and bind to specific sequences in the DNA and these sequences are known as ISRE that is interferon sensitive response elements, interferon sensitive response elements. Now, this interferon sensitive response element, this is a DNA element, element on the DNA which is a region on the DNA which is also designated as ISRE and binding of this STAT and the IRF in this region. So, this STAT dimer along with the IRF, they bind to this region and that leads to the overexpression or production of different downstream proteins and that proteins or those proteins are the mediators of the action. So, what are those proteins? They are usually the genes that produces those proteins, they are known as the interferon stimulated genes or the ISG. So, they usually leads to the upregulation of interferon stimulated genes. So, these are the ISGs or the interferon stimulated genes that are upregulated when type 1 and type 3 interferon binding occurs and there is JAK-STAT signaling. Similar to this, in case of 
the type 2 or the gamma interferon gamma also there are elements or response elements in the DNA where this stat dimer goes and binds this stat dimer goes and binds and this element in this case is known as the gamma interferon activation site or the GAS the gamma interferon activation site or the GAS. So, now once there is a type 2 interferon or gamma interferon binding there is this kind of uh, uh, receptor tetramerization leading to the jack stat signaling and the stat the dimer of the stat the stat dimer then goes and binds to the DNA elements which are also known as the gamma interferon activation site or the GAS and that also leads to production of different ISGs. So, the main mediators of function are basically the ISG. So, the idea is very clear. The idea is when there is interferon binding to an interferon receptor that leads to activation of the jack stat pathway leading to the stat dimerization and stat as it is an activator of transcription. So, it is a transcription activator. So, it goes and binds to the DNA element activates the transcription or um, uh, enhances the gene expression of certain genes which are the ISGs or the interferon stimulated genes that produces some protein molecules or proteins downstream which mediates the function. Now, type 1 and type 3 interferons are primarily responsible for antiviral activity and that is why interferons are very very important. You must be knowing that certain uh, interferons primarily interferon alpha. So, the recombinant uh, interferons are nowadays used in certain viral uh, infections. So, it, to treat viral infections like for example, hepatitis. So, in, interferons are being used for uh, treatment as well. So, the interferons has a very high antiviral activity and antiviral activity means the interferon itself is not antiviral. So, very clear interferon itself does not have the antiviral activity, but it can induce a signaling downstream of binding to the interferon receptors that can lead to some expression of genes and expression of proteins that has antiviral activities. And this antiviral activity is primarily promoted by type 1 and type 3 interferons. The type 2 or the gamma interferons are primarily responsible for anti-mycobacterial or any other non-viral infections, any bacterial infections. So, they impart usually antimycobacterial immunity and also against many other pathogens, but not viruses. So, the main antiviral activity resides in type 1 and type 3 interferons and primarily interferon alpha, interferon alpha which is a type 1 interferon. So, now the question is how this antiviral activity is being mediated by this interferon. So, what is the mechanism of action? So, this is the first uh, the upstream process that is interferon binding to the receptor and then activating the genes or uh, activating the overexpression of the genes that are actually responsible for the antiviral activity or the ISGs that is the interferon uh, stimulated genes. Now, what are these ISGs? What are the different types of ISGs that actually mediate the antiviral activity? So, if we look into the starting from here again. So, if we look into the ISRE leading to the production of or of the ISG or the interferon stimulated genes 
and these interferon stimulated genes can actually be classified in many there are, there are many interferon stimulated genes, but the most well studied. So, we will be discussing about the most well studied of these uh, interferon stimulated genes. What are the most well studied processes that actually impart the antiviral activity? So, one are the MX GTPases. The MX GTPases. A second class of proteins are the oligoadenylate synthase or OAS and RNase L mediated antiviral action. And a third way of antiviral activity is mediated by protein kinase R or PKR. So, what these uh, three different things they mean actually? So, MX GTPases, the OAS and RNSL, it is a, it's a com combined effect of the OAS and the RNSL and the protein kinase R. So, these are the three, what, three major, there are many other ISGs. So, these are the ISGs, the interferon stimulated genes whose expression is increased. They are also expressed normally but they are not over expressed, they are not over produced in the cell. Whenever there is a viral infection, there is secretion of the interferons or production of the interferons, uh, increase in the secretion of the interferons, different cells of the immune system as we have learned from our previous classes, the different cells of the immune system, they start secreting cytokines and interferons being one of those cytokines, whenever there is a viral attack, the interferon secretion increases. And when this interferon secretion increases, it leads to the uh, uh, overproduction of these ISGs, the downstream ISGs by this JAK-STAT mediated mechanism. Now, what are the three different, the, these are the, the three ISGs that I have uh, written here are the MXGTPase, the OAS and the RNSL and the protein kinase R. These are the three different GTPases, uh, three different ISGs or the interferon uh, stimulated genes that are responsible for uh, imparting the antiviral activity. Now, let us see how, how they impart the antiviral activity. The MX GTPases when they are overproduced, they start to oligomerize. So, there is an oligomerization process, oligomerization, oligomerization of the MX proteins or the MX GTPases and this oligomerization of the MX proteins, the MX protein oligomers that are produced, they can actually bind to the viral nucleocapsid. They can bind to the viral nucleocapsids and by that they can kind of sequester the virus and trap the virus. So, it can trap the virus by binding to the viral nucleocapsids, it traps, it traps and degrades the virus. Okay. So, these are this is this is mainly the action shown by the MX GTPases. So, MX GTPases are overproduced in presence of interferons when there is interferon signaling these MX GTPases they are overproduced and once they are overproduced they start to oligomerize. Once they oligomerize then these oligomers the MX GTPase oligomers they can go and bind to the nucleocapsid of the virus and then they can trap the virus or kind of sequester the virus and degrades it, it then degrades. So, this is one of the processes by which the, uh, the ISGs uh, can uh, mediate the antiviral activity. A second way of doing it is by the oligoadenylate synthase. Now, what is this oligoadenylate synthase? So, oligoadenylate synthase is a particular class of 
uh, proteins which can actually make 2 prime to 5 prime phosphodiester linkages. Normally in, in, in our uh, nucleic acids in DNA we find a uh, 3 to 5 prime uh, uh, phosphodiester linkage, but this oligoadenylate synthase they can actually lead to or they induces formation of 2 prime 5 prime oligoadenylates. So, they just join these ATP molecules and produces if in the 2 to 5 prime uh, joining uh, they can produce oligoadenylates and this oligoadenylate once they are formed it can activate a specialized class of RNAs. Now, what happens is when interferon signaling occurs interferon type 1 interferons or type 3 interferons they bind and uh, lead to the overexpression of this ISG because OAS is one of those ISGs. So, when there is an overexpression of the oligoadenylate synthase, the oligoadenylate synthase usually is present as a monomer, it is a monomer, it is usually a monomer, but this monomer is an uh, which is an inactive form. Now, when this when there is a viral attack, so it interacts with the virus, it can directly interact with the virus primarily with the genetic material of the virus. So, with the viral RNA for example, so it interacts with the viral RNA and it can oligomerize. So, this this OAS then can form a tetramer. So, now this tetramer is the active form. So, this oligoadenylate synthase when it is produced uh, uh, upon interferon signaling it usually exists as a monomer when it can interact this uh, monomers of the oligoadenylate synthase interacts with the viral RNA it starts to tetramerize. Now, it forms tetramers. Now, these tetramers when they are formed these tetramers they can actually induce the synthesis of 2 prime 5 prime oligo adenylate. So, this 2 prime 5 prime oligo adenylates are being now produced after tetramerization. So, now this is the tetramer. So, this monomer is the inactive form and this tetramer is the active form. So, this O of the OAS, so this is the OAS, we have not spoken about the RNAs L yet. So, now this 2 prime 5 prime oligoadenylate that is being synthesized by the, uh, the tetramer, tetrameric OAS, this can interact with RNAs L. RNAs L which is also normally produced in the cell in very minimal amount in constitutive amount is being over expressed in response to interferon signaling and that is why it is also one of those ISGs. So, it is also an interferon stimulated gene. So, RNAs L is also over produced. Now, this RNAs L when binds to this oligoadenylate synthase it also dimerizes. So, RNAs L normally, is, normally it remains as a monomer. So, it is a normally a monomer when there is binding of this oligoadenylate synthase uh, so, sorry 2 prime 5 prime oligoadenylates when they bind to this RNAs L that leads to dimerization. So, RNAs L dimers are formed and these RNAs L dimers these are the active form. The RNAs L monomer is the inactive form, the RNAs L dimer is the active form and this RNAs L dimer now can cleave or chop off the viral RNA. So, it cleaves the 
viral RNA. Clear? So, it can now cleave the viral RNA. A third pathway is about the protein kinase R or the PKR and these are also induced by the interferons. So, this protein kinase R is also produced in response to interferon binding and once they are induced by interferons these PKR monomers are synthesized and again very similar to the OAS the PKR monomers they are also activated by activated by the viral RNA. They can also bind to the viral RNA and when they bind to the viral RNA the PK monomer then they are phosphorylated and this phosphorylated so this monomers is the inactive form when they binds to the viral RNA the PKR phosphorylation occurs and that leads to the PKR dimer formation. Now, they becomes PKR dimers the protein kinase R dimerizes. So, there is a dimerization and now it becomes active. So, now this PKR dimer is an active uh, form of the PKR and as uh, the name suggests it is a protein kinase. So, it can also phosphorylate other proteins. So, it starts to its target protein is the initiation factor or the tra in the translation uh, eukaryotic initiation factor it starts to phosphorylate the EIF2 alpha which is a translation initiation factor and thereby it stops the process of or blocks strand inhibits translation. So, and so in turn it kills the virus. So, uh, if we look into this, uh, uh, the, this three uh, pathways that are being induced by this ISGs primarily the interferons. So, whenever there is an interferon signaling the ISREs there is binding of this uh, 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 the stat and the dimerization of the stat uh, this portion. So, starting from here again. So, there is dimerization of the stat and leading to binding to the ISREs leading to the induction of these genes the interferon stimulated genes or the ISGs. Now, these ISGs the major three ISGs are these MX GTPases, the OAS and the RNSL and the protein kinase R. As I described these MX GTPases <coughs> they are Mm, produced in uh, huge amount and uh, they start oligomerization where once they start to oligomerize they can react or they can interact with the nucleocapsid of the virus they binds to the nucleocapsid of the virus and by that they can trap the virus and degrade it. So, this is one process the OAS or the oligoadenylate synthase normally is produced as inactive monomers this is the inactive monomer. Now, this monomer can interact with the viruses and primarily with the viral RNA. So, they interact with the viral RNA and it forms a tetramer. Now, this tetramer is the active form. Now, once it forms a tetramer it starts to synthesize this 2 prime 5 prime oligoadenylate and this 2 prime 5 prime oligoadenylate in turn activates the RNAs L and helps in RNAs L dimerization. So, this 2 prime 5 prime adenylate 2 prime 5 prime oligoadenylate is required for activation and dimerization of the RNAs L. Okay. So, RNAs L is activated and it is uh, it dimerizes. Now, this dimeric RNAs L can cleave the viral RNA as well as the RNA of the cell. So, the infected cell. So, and then it kills or destroys the virus. And then the, well, the third process is the protein kinase R or the PKR. So, the PKR is again synthesized as monomer as a monomeric unit 
and it is also it can interact with the viral RNA. So, once it interacts with the viral RNA, uh, it is activated and PKR uh, once activated this PKR monomers they get phosphorylated. So, this PKR this protein kinase uh, R monomers they are phosphorylated and this phosphorylated monomers they can now form PKR dimers and the PKR dimers is the active form. So, this PKR monomers are the inactive form and this is the active form. So, this is the active form and this is the inactive form. So, now this PKR dimers they become active and they are the active form. So, uh, they become active and they are uh, the active uh, form of the PKR or the protein kinase R. And one of the target proteins of the PKR is the uh, EIF2 alpha. So, the initiation factor in the translation and it can phosphorylate the EIF2 alpha or uh, this initiation factor and by that it can inhibit the translation and thereby it can also inhibit the uh, viruses or the uh, destroys the viruses. So, overall these interferons as we uh, understand from here the interferons they mediate their actions by binding to interferon receptors leading to when they bind to the interferon receptors leading to downstream uh, signaling that leads to the uh, overexpression of the ISGs and the ISGs in turn uh, they have uh, they mediate the antiviral activity. So, uh, we primarily discussed about uh, the antiviral activity of the interferons which is mainly mediated by type 1 and type 3 interferons. We have not discussed about the type 2 interferons. Type 2 interferons are primarily responsible for imparting anti mycobacterial uh, immunity and other bacterial immunity as well. They are not related to antiviral activity. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, this is the brief mechanism of antiviral activity mediated by the interferons, and uh, that's all for uh, today's uh, this class. Uh, and thank you very much.